All right. Well, now we want to welcome on the show Jake Charche, uh, formerly known as Chartier, apparently. Or Chartier. Hey, Chartier. <laughs> How yeah. to say? We got a few different ones for you, but uh, it's good to have you on the show, man. How you doing? Pretty good. Uh, yeah. Thanks so much for having me. It's it's been been kind of looking forward to it, uh, talking about it the last couple of weeks, and finally made it work. So it's awesome. Right here. on. Right on. Yeah, we've had uh, some of the boys on. They always have a good time. We talked last week with uh, uh, who do we have on? We had Stab. We had Stab on, okay. and then the week before that, we had uh, Damien. Oh my God, that kid can talk. Damien. Yeah. yeah. Who was it? Damien and uh, Brad. Brad. Is Brad. Yeah, yeah, dude. That was a riot. That was that was classic. <laughs> that, would be, that would be a good group to have on. They were chirping at the end. It was awesome. Oh yeah. So you're uh, from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Um, you know, what, what is life like up there compared to down here in Chesterfield, Missouri? Um, honestly, it's not as different as you would think in too many ways. Like Saskatoon mm -hmm. is a city of about 300,000. Um, the major difference would definitely be the temperature. Uh, oh yeah. Like minus 50 degrees Celsius there right now. So, I mean, put that in perspective what we're we're dealing with down here it's it gets pretty cold but i mean nor, normal life besides that i'd say not too far off even missouri's a pretty good representation but similar what's the uh marsh and i were kind of talking um before he came on what is i can imagine the uh i mentioned everybody who plays hockey up there everybody's mm -hmm. out on the pond what is the competition like growing up with hockey for like pond hockey or for like actual actual hockey like actual hockey oh well yeah i mean saskatoon i think saskatchewan i think the nhl actually did something about like most nhl players per capita i think mm -hmm. something along the lines of that so i mean you're always growing up every every year i'll have someone going to the nhl right drafted from saskatoon or yeah or others so the top end guys are always really really good but it's consistent throughout right it's and a lot of people are playing so it, it's definitely a, a good level down there yeah i can imagine there's a few players on the blues uh braden shen and Jaden schwartz who are sasky boys you bet yeah absolutely. yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you do you pay attention to the blues um I, well one the blues were actually supposed to go to saskatoon like years ago right right so do you have like a favorite nhl team uh i do i uh my favorite team is boston Oh, but that's God. funny you say it, the Saskatoon Blues thing because I actually have a jersey at home of like a Saskatoon Blues mock-up jersey. That's oh sick. nice, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. Who else said Boston? And we were giving them crap, Marshy. Oh God! Hey, someone else said Boston. We're like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> we're just biased. We're biased. Right? We, yeah, we're biased. I mean, okay. But uh, let's let's talk about this team that you're on right now. Um, you know, you guys have been playing a, a decent amount of hockey in such a short kind of window, but now there's been a break, and you kind of you get time to recharge the batteries, but also it's been a little bit of time where it's like, okay, like I kind of want to get back on the ice and play some games. Where's the, the team's mindset right now with this break? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think, like, coming in coming into this weekend even w I think we were pretty beat up like that's a lot of hockey in a, a pretty short amount of time there and uh, the lineup was short immediately right we had guys mm. hurt from the get-go so I think it was refreshing at the start but three or four days in you get pretty pretty bored of sitting around and uh, not not being out on the ice so I think we're we're itching to get back now to a degree but uh it's it's a nice refresh for sure at the same yeah time. at least you guys are i mean you're still practicing and everything even though there's no games you guys are still in the ring practicing so actually i'm like some of us aren't so the contact tracing however it ended up working with the covid stuff uh some guys can some guys can i think there's actually only five guys from our team the d1 team uh and they're kind of doing a little mixed practice right now mm -hmm. but there's, there's quite a few of the bodies that are just, you know, at home all day right now in quarantine. So it's not a lot going on. Yeah. Going to, going to college to play hockey and you can't play hockey. That's got to be rough. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
You're probably practicing the, the thumbs, man, playing some video games in your downtime, yeah. playing a little chell. Yeah, a little bit. We uh, we have a, a net here to shoot pucks on, so we do that quite a bit too. And, you know, I got four roommates, so we we uh, <laughs> always kind of figure out something to get get after. But, um, yeah, a little bit of chell every once in a while doesn't kill a guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right. Well, man, you guys, uh, there's been some games that I'm sure you guys have, have wanted back, um, but you guys have done a lot of good things as well this season. Um, is there anything in particular that you yourself or some of your teammates um, have kind of talked about that, you know, you guys want to clean up heading into this back half of the season to, uh, you know, make a major push, um, you know, for nationals, which by the way, just announced mm -hmm. is Come in here, home barn. Uh, that's got to excite you. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's that's pretty cool being uh, first year in the league, having that opportunity. But, um, you know, we've only played. Well, I think it's eight games now, but uh, or whatever nine. Um, and I think obviously there's just going to be a little bit of rust. Guys haven't skated in ten months, mm -hmm. played games, so. You know, we're trying. I think we're trying to keep it positive right now, and just you know, keep working through the growing pains. Hopefully, uh, we can start being a winning team on a little bit more of a consistent basis. But you know, D zone out. Everything needs to just be a little bit sharp, a little bit better. So, I think all over the ice we can improve. But I mean, you guys have no problem scoring goals. We've seen that over the past couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's kind of push and pull. One day our offense will be um, amazing, but we got to work on the D zone. So a little bit of balancing. Hopefully we can figure it out in the next couple of weeks here. Yeah, it's hard to get into a uh, – to get into a gel, get into a groove when you never know, hey, are our game's canceled? Are we playing? Are we not playing? Can we practice? So, mm -hmm. yeah, we were talking earlier, man. I don't know how you guys are doing it. Uh, you know, hats off to you guys. You've still been playing great hockey. So we'll see where uh, the rest of the season takes us. Takes you guys. Yeah. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. Chuck. I mean, it's such a whirlwind coming into the COVID season, but uh, it's been good so far. We've, you know, we've, we've managed well for what we have, we've, we've had for sure. Chuck says us because he's so invested with the team and he, he's part of the team. <laughs> yeah. Next week, you'll see Chuck on the bench in his gear. Yeah. <laughs> Just I'll be standing, I'll be, I'll be dressed waiting by the glass. Guys, I'm in. <laughs> He's the first guy in the dressing room, the last one out. Yeah, who's this old guy dressing? <laughs> oh, man, that's great. But uh, so let's talk about your teammates a little bit. Um, you know, you're, you know, we, you know, getting in the groove of this season. Who are some of the guys that you've latched on to? Maybe some of the older guys that have helped you uh, um, in your, you know, transition to Maryville. Um, you know, I think uh, I have TJ here, uh, Prexler he's my roommate also and he's kind of been the guy like my my go-to guy for just about anything like hockey you know we do a lot of workouts and stuff together but he he's definitely made the transition easier um and then there's a handful of guys that you know I could add to that layer like Kyle Dunville obviously another one of my roommates and then uh even Damian Brad all those all those older guys have been you know very very uh welcoming you know really really nice guys so yeah, it's always nice to have. <clears throat> coming from uh, – so your first year with Maryville, coming from the SJHL, what's the uh, – you know, what's the difference between, uh, you know, Saskatoon junior hockey to, you know, ACHA college hockey? Um, for me, the main, the main difference right now is you don't get any boys out there. You get men. So you're dealing with 24, 25 year old guys. And for me being a little bit undersized, uh, it makes a big difference. So definitely that's been the, the one major thing. You, you, you get a couple 225, 230 guys throwing their weight yeah. around out there. It's not the funnest, but uh, uh, that's, that's definitely the major, just a lot bigger boys, stronger, everyone can play. Yeah, you, I mean, you mentioned, you know, the, the age difference, a lot of big guys, uh, you know, you yourself, we say your name all the time. Um, you know, you're always going in those greasy areas throughout the game. Uh, for those that like don't know your game, like how would you describe your game? Um, I would say I'm kind of a 200 foot. Uh, I, I, you know, pride the D zone. 
I definitely like to, and then I, I like to get my, my body in the corners too for what I am. I definitely think a big part of it's getting mixed up in the corners and that, that just gets me into the game. But other than that, I think I have a little bit of offensive upside can make some plays and put the puck in the net every once in a while. So a little bit, a <laughs> little bit of everything. Favorite player growing up? Uh, it, it was Crosby. It, well, it went through a phase because Crosby went through that, like everyone was calling him a whiner. And if you almost <laughs> like Crosby, you're scrutinized. So before that, it was probably Bergeron. And then it went to Crosby. And then it's kind of just stuck at Crosby probably until he retires. I mean, that's, he's a good player to, to try. Yeah, and I mean, I mean yeah. it's crazy, dude. Like, people are getting so much better at this game as the years goes along. I mean, that's ex- be expected. But you guys, guy, guys like Matthews, McDavid, McKinnon are just, like, transcending this game. You're just like, dude, how do you do that? It's, it's incredible. ridiculous not to harp on it, but it's ridiculous watching those guys play hockey. Like, you know, we, we looked at, I guess, like, Meyer, like, when Crosby started or Ovechkin started, like, oh, my gosh, you guys are so good. And then guys like McDavid and McKinnon come out, and you're like, Whoa. Like, how does – how yeah. is this even possible, right? Yeah. The evolution of the game is incredible. Yeah. Incredible. So, I, I, I've given, you know, this opportunity to a couple of other guys on the team uh, just to, you know, kind of chirp them a little bit. But uh, in your opinion, who has the biggest muffin on the team? <laughs> oh, the biggest muffin. Some guys have been too nice about this. I just want – I want to hear – lay it out there. Just let them know. Uh. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say a muffin, but I would say Jimbo has the most outrageous shot on the team. Oh like just, okay. It's the second Jimbo, time someone said him. <laughs> you get out front and you're not sure if it's coming shoulder height or ankle height. Oh, what direction. God. So the uncertainty with Jimbo is way more frightening than than someone having a muffin, I think. <laughs> no, I would agree with that. I I mean <laughs> you go to you know maybe deflect a, a shot in and you're just like yeah i just might wait for a, yeah. for a rebound or something <laughs> and just hover around the net you yeah. know maybe i'll go on the other side of the net because it might miss and it'll bounce out to me <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> but uh w- one more before we let you go it, yeah. and I, I like asking this question if there was one person that you would not want you to help or like the last person you would think that would help you get off a deserted island on your team, who would it be? Um, I like I like giving Brad uh, Boudreaux a hard time about the whole COVID thing. He's been pr- very, uh, you know, like hand sanitizer. Very, you know, he, he abides by the rules very well, very yep. closely. Uh, so I like to give him a hard time and just say I, I couldn't deal with putting up with him whispering about COVID in my ear the whole time on the island. <laughs> We got asked that question. I, I said the exact same thing. I was like, I couldn't deal with Brad. <laughs> COVID-19 craziness all the time. Damien said that uh, he thinks Brad would would just leave him. Not even yeah, – Yeah, yeah. He, he does at the rink. Yeah, he, <laughs> he might just find a way off the island too. He said, he said Josh would uh, take a nap. Like, yeah, man, I'll help you. Let me get a nap in real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh, great. Man. Well, hey, Jake, man, we appreciate you coming on the show and, uh, you know, good luck, nothing or nothing, but th- we hope for nothing but the best for you, uh, you know, the rest of the year. And uh, we're excited for you guys to get going here soon. You bet. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Absolutely.